What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to The Madness. Today we're going to start off with a little live demo about what the 10-tap delay can do when used with the Korg and a guitar at the same time with a backing track. All right, let's check it out. As you can hear, that sounds creamy, nice and buttery, like you just got done going to the dairy farm and got a whole gallon bucket of fresh warm milk and then you dumped it all over your guitar. It's nice. All right, well besides that, let's jump right in, show you exactly how to use this thing. I'm excited about it. This is actually one of my favorite types of delay, offers a lot of flexibility, and let's just, you know, show you what it's all about. Let's get in. All right, here we are, guys. Me on the top right, notes on the bottom right, and this is directly from the brand new updated blocks guide from Fractal Audio. So you can see exactly what's going on inside the block with new notes, and uh, that's really helpful because sometimes outdated stuff happens, and I don't want to show you that. But here we are. We got 10 tab delay right here on the Axe Edit page, and it doesn't have too much. It has only two tabs, and uh, you know, one of the tabs is just basically levels for all the taps. Really not much going on there, but a lot of flexibility going on at the same time. So don't let the, you know, the simple looks deceive you. So what do we got here? We got the number of taps, and that is basically dictating how long this delay is going to last aside from your delay tempo or your delay time, which are tied together once again, one or the other. So right now in my guitar, I've got 10 taps, and you can just kind of hear what this sounds like. So you can kind of hear right now, it's kind of, if you're listening on headphones, the, the sounds, the delays are bouncing back and forth, and that's from the use of these pan effects right down here. And that's kind of the main kind of, kind of the beef. That's where you get kind of some interesting combinations going on in here. So I'll get to that in a second, but I want to describe to you what's going on over here for now. So we got the number of taps, which I just said. We got the delay time, which I just showed you, and then the decay. Basically how much of this signal, of the delay signal, is gonna be remaining at the end of all of the taps. So if I have it right now as a 70.3%, that's how much is gonna be decayed. So the last tap is gonna be 30% volume compared to the first, you know? So you got 100% at the beginning, 30% at the end. So you're decaying by 70% roughly. Shuffle. So what the shuffle does, and I'll just show you because it basically creates a, a sort of a, um, like a, a like a shuffle sound, you'll see. Like, listen to this. So if I turn this thing up to 25% shuffle, it's gonna sound uneven as far as the bounces go. And now if I increase this to 50%, that's the highest it goes. See, the, the delay kind of waits until the end and then it jumps again, it's kind of just uneven, it's shuffling. So I like to keep this as, like, I don't know, it depends, the application, but I, I like to keep it low or zero. Just depends on what you really want to go for. I think it's a really cool function, so obviously use as you will. Uh, the spread factor. So this is how much is your, uh, your delays going left and right or how much of it is just kind of spreading. It says in stereo mode, this sets the spread of the repeats. At maximum, the left channel is panned fully left and the right channel is panned fully right. So that means you're really kind of bouncing it from far left and to far right in your headphones in stereo mode only. So make sure you, if you're going to use that, you have to click this over the stereo. And then the ratio in stereo mode adjusts the left time as a percentage of the right. So right now, the ratio is set to 86.3%, which means it's 86% roughly left in comparison to right. 
So there's left, uh, there's bounces on the left less than there is bounces on the right because if it's a ratio of right, right is always going to be 100. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the beef there. You know, it can sound a little bit confusing, but just know you're adjusting basically how much you're getting on the left side. Oh, we got some coppers. All right, so right here we got the pan effect stereo or mono, and that basically determines whether or not you're actually hearing spread and bouncing left to right. If you want it all the time, just like boom, 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 front and center, just put this thing to mono, don't worry about it. If you want stereo and you want that spread, you want that rain droppy kind of sound sometimes, give this zero a whack, I like it a lot. So you might be able to hear that because I did down or did up sample this thing so you can hear it that way. So the pan shape, this is pretty cool because you can adjust how in the world these things are going back and forth. So right now I've got this set to a sine wave which emphasizes the movement of back and forth. Now it could be increasing, decreasing, down up, up down. You know, we can just go ahead and show you a couple of these just so you get an idea of what's going on. Up, down, increasing. Let's just give this a whack. that now down up opposite of up down interesting now decreasing interesting ones again and then constant stays the same but as I said, I like sign. I like the bounciness. I think that sounds cool. Like you can just hear it going back and forth in your headphones. And then the pan alpha is basically how much of this thing is actually bouncing. As it says right here, controls how quickly the repeats move as a function of tap number and pan shape. Higher values produce a more pronounced effect to alternate left to right, set the shape to sign, and pan alpha to maximum, which is exactly what I've got here. So you can really hear what's going on. That's why I did this. So that's the whole gist of it, except for the taps tab. So if you want certain taps to really be emphasized, you change what's on here. Now I've got currently, I've got the decay set all the way to 70.3%. Now, as I, you know, I don't really want to increase taps volume over here if I want to maintain that level. You know, you could do some funky things where it kind of goes all the way down, then bounces back up by using this, which is what I could do. I'll show you that real quick. It's like, oh. Can kind of hear at the very end, kind of getting a little bit louder. See how at the very end, it kind of gave it a little bit of a lift. That's what's going on there. So. That is the entirety of the 10 tap delay. We can do the rhythm tap delay now too. So we got the 10 tap and the rhythm tap in one block. Don't forget about this because you know sometimes you don't know. Either way, we've got all of this type of stuff in here too. So now the taps page changes up a bit. So we've got timings and we've got levels here. So we've got time one and then you can change the individual rhythms. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just alter these up a bit you know, this is basically the distance in time between each of the taps. So I'm just gonna just mess around with them. You'll be able to tell when something happens when I do this, right? All right, so I almost didn't give you some important details about this rhythm tap delay. This learn and reset, what does this do? So you can have this thing kind of quantized to a certain amount, you know, 164th, whatever. And then you can have this thing based on when you tap this learn button, will set the rhythms here. And I'll show you that right now. So if I wanted to go do, 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 do. You know, just something generally like that, right? It obviously did all of the times already. Now, if I play this. That's a pretty cool function to me. So now we've got the same things, except now 
we no longer have the uh, the controls over here, the delay, shuffle, spread, and ratio, because we have complete control over that in here. Oh, I just messed that all up. So let's go ahead and do some more of this. All right, check this out. That's the deal. So you've learned everything about the 10 tap delay that I can really give you. I've given you options about checking this thing out over here. The rhythm tap has you know, a similar notes page. You can just read up on it if you really want to. But I showed you essentially what's going on here. Now there's a lot of stuff you can do, be more creative, but I'm gonna leave that up to you because that's the creative portion of this and that's what's the most fun. But I hope to catch you guys the next time. If you like this content, please slap like, slap subscribe, it really helps me out. But I'll catch you all on the flippy floppy, y'all. Ciao for now.